Hey, I'm Kai, and today I'm going to run through my sort of two-week review of the Line 6 HX1 now that I'm out of that honeymoon period. While I do still love the HX1, it's safe to say I have encountered a fair few issues with the unit that I'm going to detail in this video. I will say with the negatives in this video that it's likely that some of these will change with firmware updates down the line if enough people agree that these are problems. Before we get into it I want to quickly say if there are any other pedals that you want to see me shoot out against the Line 6 HX1 please let me know in the comment section down below so that I can get that sorted. I'm currently thinking of something like the Amparo Mini, the Mua Prime P2 or maybe even something higher end like the Eventide H9 for instance. Let's start by talking about the form factor of the HX1. As expected, this pedal fit onto my pedal board perfectly. Now I've got the HX1 routed in four cable method so that I can run effects either into the front end of my amp or through my amp's effects loop. I've also got my pedal board running through a patch bay so the looks may be a little bit deceiving and the signal chain isn't exactly as you see it on the board. The first pedal we go into is the Clon Clone, and then we run through all of my other drives and finally into the HX1. Then we go into the patch bay, which goes out to my amp. Then we come back in through the amp's effects loop and we go through the vibrato, the delay, the reverb, back into the HX1 and then out to the effects return of my amp. Now this flexibility has proven to be nothing short of fantastic, at least in my setup. I can flip a single switch from pre to post and quickly experiment with whether I want a reverb in the effects loop for that classic studio-like reverb sound or into the front end of the amp for wall of noise, shoegazy type stuff. Now, in my previous videos regarding the HX1, I mentioned that the first 70% of the learning curve was super simple, and that final 30% was more complicated than it needed to be. On reflection, I do think I may have overstated this one somewhat. I actually think the learning curve scales pretty nicely with the user. If you just want to get a tone running, you can use the effects knob to choose your effect, and the top three parameters to set the main parameters for it. If you then want to dive a little bit deeper, you can use the page controls to access some extra parameters for the different pedals, and then you can get into things like saving your preset by holding the home button. Every step in this learning curve is pretty easy to adapt to, and you'll pick up pretty much everything you need quite fast. There are some more complicated things available through sort of deeper dive multifunction buttons, but Ultimately, you don't really need them most of the time. I was overwhelmed at first when I built this graphic that goes through all of the different controls that you can access by pressing various buttons and combinations of buttons. However, there are quite a few things on here that you just really don't need in day-to-day -day use, such as overwriting factory presets and things like that. You'll pick up the things you need as you need them as you go along, and other things can sort of be left by the wayside. Like, you know, I'm not really flicking from the very first page to the very last page of parameters all that often. I'm quite happy to just cycle through like normal. So with that said, I think I'm confidently in the camp that the Line 6 HX1 is simple to use. All multi-effects pedals have various learning curves, and I think the HX1 has really nailed one of the easiest learning curves there is. Let's quickly touch on the price, though for the re-review, my opinion on this hasn't really changed at all. I think the £250 mark for this HX1 is pretty much spot on, and people comparing it against the used prices of the Stomp is somewhat ridiculous to me. Give it another six months and the HX1 will also be on the used market and then we can compare like for like and see, you know, which one represents the best value for money. So once again, I find myself talking about the new Flux feature in the HX1. If you don't know already, I'll give you a super quick rundown. The Flux feature lets you swap between two sets of parameters for every effect in the unit. I can't say this is a function that's become a must have for me, though for certain effects it can be quite nice. For example, for shoegazy stuff, I like having the reverb turn up so that the mix goes from sort of a 50% blend of your dry guitar and the wet guitar, all the way up to a 100% wet signal for big washes of just random soundscapes. I also like it for distortion tones when, you know, if I'm using the Ratatouille distortion for instance, rolling up from a low gain all the way up to a high gain on a really slow ramp with a flux control can be really good. It sort of simulates that sweeping swell sound that you get with the volume knob of your guitar, 
but it's controlling the gain of the pedal rather than the volume. I do think the flux control is a useful feature and I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy it. I'm not personally someone that's constantly tweaking my effects like this, so it's only really there for one-off occasions for me, but it's still nice to have. We're about to get into some negatives, but before we do, I'd like to quickly ask that you subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you're interested in the HX1, I've got a bunch more videos coming up with it shortly, as well as some comparisons with the new Zoom MS50 G Plus when that arrives. That's gonna be quite an interesting one, given that the Zoom is half the price. So as I said, unfortunately there are some negatives that I found with this unit since my initial review. After owning it for just a couple of weeks, I've noticed quite a few bugs, quite a few missing features, and quite a few sort of weird things that they've added in that I expect them to change in a future update. I will say none of these have hampered my HX1 experience enough for me to dislike the pedal. Some are frustrating at worst, but I wouldn't say any of them are deal breakers, at least for me. Your opinion on that, whether or not it's a deal breaker may be different. I've decided to log each one of these on a severity scale to give you an idea of how important it is to me. So zero severity is going to be not severe at all, as in, you know, this issue isn't really an issue at all, it's just something that I want to bring up. And 10 will be maybe not a deal breaker for me, but could definitely be a deal breaker for you. Let's start with a couple of actual measurable bugs that, you know, I've since reported to Line 6 and will likely be fixed in the next set of firmware updates for the HX1. Firstly, if you disable the tap tempo blinking light, that's the light that blinks in time with your tap tempo, you'll also lose the indicators for your flux controls. This one can be pretty confusing and quite hampering to the overall experience. However, the fix for that now is just to keep the tap tempo light on. So, you know, not really too big of a deal, but enough that I've logged it with line six and hopefully it will be repaired in the future. So I'm gonna say this is a three out of 10 severity maybe. Next, there's one strange issue with the flux in particular, where it applies globally rather than per preset. This ought to be something you can control with the settings menu, and I imagine we'll see them add that later on down the line, but for now it works pretty strange. It mainly has some weird snapping issues where you go to press the flux button and it snaps all the way up to your flux control and then ramps slowly back down to the unfluxed thing. All sorts of weird things like that can really mess with your presets. And you know, this one's caught me out a few times. I'd say that for now, this is quite a high severity since it can really mess you up. I'm going to log this one as a seven out of 10 severity. So as I previously said, I don't use the flux feature all that often. So it doesn't really affect me as much as it could, but for the people that do use Flux, this is gonna be a huge issue. I've got two more bugs that are somewhat linked, so I'm gonna group these two together. There are no momentary options for the effects in the HX1. This is a huge one and one that I'm absolutely gutted to see, especially since all of the other Helix products have this momentary option. Momentary switches, if you're unaware, change the pedal from activating when you press and release it to only activating the effect as you've got the foot switch held. This can be fantastic for things like Whammy, for instance, where you want the pitch to shift up an octave only when you're holding the pedal and then release when you let go. Otherwise, you've got to tap the pedal to get into your octave and then tap it again to get out. Maybe a first world problem, but I am gonna log this one as a 10 out of 10 severity. Mainly because this applies to so many different effects. Things like the feedbacker, the stutter, the freeze, the pitch effects. All of these things would be so much better if we had momentary options in the HX1. Off the back of that, the flux control has something pretty strange about it in that it only starts the flux when you let go of the pedal. So it doesn't have that instant snapping thing as you, you know, sort of press the pedal down like you get with most other pedals. This can lead it to feeling very laggy, which is very strange for pitch effects in particular. This would be resolved if we had those momentary options, but for now, I'm gonna leave this one as a six out of 10 severity. Now, one thing I noticed pretty early doors with the HX1 is the volume disparities. Now, this is particularly prevalent in the drive pedals. As you're scrolling through the list of different drive pedals, you can see the volume jumping up and down, up and down, and it can be quite alarming, especially if you're running through quite a loud amp. This isn't just the drive pedals though, and that's what kind of confuses me. It also happens on quite a lot of the modulations. You'll be scrolling through the modulations and the volume will drop significantly 
recently for stuff like the Chorus, for instance. Now, this may be just due to my playback system, and it could be perfectly usable in the system that they've built these presets on. So I'm going to log this one as a 3 out of 10 severity, even though for me, I'd say this is an 8 out of 10. The fix for this is long, it's tricky, and it's not something I've got around to doing yet. It's going through every single effect in the unit and setting a new factory default where the volumes are all matched. I will say though, once you've got a list of your own presets running, you don't really need to dive into this all that often and it's only really a problem when you're scrolling through the list to find new presets. Initially, I said I liked the tuner in the HX1 because I've known the tuner quality to be great across all of the other Helix products and after a quick tune with the HX1, I didn't notice any issues. However, a couple weeks down the line, I have noticed it to be very slow at times. It will latch on to certain notes. For example, when I'm in low tunings, as I often am with my baritone guitars, I'll play something like a low F sharp, switch to the low C sharp, and it will still display the F sharp on the screen, and you've got to sort of wait for it to catch up. This can be very frustrating and not really what I expected of the tuner. I'm gonna log this one as a low severity, at, you know, maybe a five out of 10, since this pedal is designed to be a pedal on a pedal board that's already got a tuner on it, and the tuner was really sort of thrown in as an afterthought. I maybe made a mistake by, you know, taking off the tuner from my board to put the HX1 on, and I reckon I'll be going back to a standard tuner soon. Now I'm gonna blast through a few more quick negatives. These are all very low for me, but they may rank higher in your estimations. The lack of a desktop editor came as something of a shock to me, though I, can imagine why they didn't bother to add one since it's only a single effect at a time. So this is a 3 out of 10 severity, maybe even, no, this is a 2 out of 10 severity. Another minor one is that the librarian app takes a long time to reorder presets. If you build all of your presets at the end and want to move them up to the top of the preset list, this can take sort of a minute or two just to reorder these presets, which can be quite frustrating. So this is another 3 out of 10 for me. One more, the legacy effects are grouped weirdly in the list. I think Line 6 wanted to have a full integration of the legacy and the regular Helix effects, however the list view really doesn't work for this. You go through your chorus, your vibrato, your tremolo, and then it circles back around to the top again and then you go back to the chorus, the vibrato and the tremolo, because it's grouped into the legacy effects as a separate category while all being in a single list. Doesn't really make too much sense. I think they should have either committed to the legacy effects being integrated with the unit and merged the two lists together, or have them dedicated legacy effects with some kind of indicator that you're in the legacy section. This is quite confusing and often leads to effects getting lost in the list, but since it doesn't really matter all that much, I am going to log this one as a zero out of 10. The last bug I have to mention is that all effects display the stereo parameters even when you're in mono. I'm actually not sure how to categorize how severe this one is because I'm not sure how to test it. I feel like it should cause problems with modulations and delays because you're using a stereo pedal and then collapsing it to mono afterwards. However, I've not really noticed any adverse effects of this. It does mean that the stereo effects of the Helix like the double tracker, the rotary, and the stereo looper are all available even when you're in mono and these sound pretty terrible. I now want to get into a couple of things that they may change, but I don't think are very necessary to change whatsoever. When scrolling through the list of presets in preset view, you can't always see which preset is coming up next. This would be fixed if the focus of the preset scrolling view was set to the center, however this may cause problems like not knowing which direction you're scrolling through the preset list. There's currently no option to share presets of the Line 6 HX1 on the Line 6 Custom Tone website. This is a sort of small minor thing, but I did quite like that when I was messing around with the Helix stuff for instance, because you can try out other people's approach to dialing everything in. I understand why they didn't do it because it's only a single effect per block, so it's not really that much of a thing to have other people's presets in the unit, but I do think for some of the more complicated units like the crisscross, the ratchet, the non-linear reverb, those sort of things would benefit from, you know, just having someone else's preset as a jumping off point to see how they're using it first. So this next one is a comment that was brought up to me in a previous video, and I don't really have any personal interest in this one, however I do think it's worth bringing up. The comment stated that there should be an option in the settings menu to have the preset name show up on the full screen display rather than the effects block name. 
This one only really takes effect when you've got multiple different presets using the same effects block. For instance, if you were using the simple delay throughout your whole set list and every different song had a different setting, you'd want it to display which song you were on rather than which effects block, since they'd all would just say simple delay. I wouldn't use this feature myself, but I can see the value in it for sure. So with that, let's wrap it up into a nice little conclusion. While there are a lot of things that I brought up as negatives with the HX1, I am still utterly infatuated with the unit. I do believe most of these issues to be teething problems at worst. HX1 is still in very much its infancy, and I expect we'll see a lot of firmware updates down the line that address some of these or add other functionalities that do better things than what I proposed previously. Most of the issues I mentioned address specific users and specific use cases. I did my due diligence to try and work out every single flaw that I can with the unit, so some of these don't even particularly apply to what I'm doing. To coast back onto a more positive note, I am finding a ton of use with the Line 6 HX1. As I'd expected, my most common use case is using it for different drive pedals into the front end of my amp. This Orange Rock Verb 100 is fantastic, but it's super boomy, and especially in lower tunings, really benefits from a boost up front. Being able to choose between, say, the Scream 808, the Pillars, the Horizon Drive, to suit whichever guitar I'm using has proven to be incredibly powerful. Since my pedal board is already pretty pretty much full of fuzz pedals. I haven't really experimented with many of the fuzz pedals in the unit, however I did like the Dark Dove fuzz. I also use the HX1 for a lot of stacked drive sounds. So I've got a clone, clone on my board, and running that into a Tube Screamer or the like really adds a nice layer of stacked drive and lots of versatility to be had. I also found myself really enjoying experimenting with modulation. I thought I'd be enjoying the sort of Boss CE1 classic chorus things, but I've actually really liked the Grey Flanger. And while I'm not a shoegaze guitarist by any stretch of the imagination, I have really been enjoying making sort of soundscapes by using both the delay and reverb that are on my board stacked with a reverb in the HX1, whether that's into the front end of the amp or in the effects loop. So that's everything that I've got for this video. If you want to check out my Line 6 HX1 full tutorial or my first impressions mini review that I did previously, I'll leave links both on screen and in the description box down below for you to do so. So, drop a comment down below letting me know what you think of the HX1. I'm personally leaning a little more favourably towards it than some other users are, but I'm curious to see where everyone else is standing with it. Thank you so much for watching, I've been Kai.